Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, everyone. So let us let us start our uh, final uh, class by paying homage to both Boda by saying Namo Dasa. Namo Dasa Bhagavato Arahato Samba Sambo Dasa. Namo Dasa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambo Dasa. Namo Dasa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambo Dasa. So can I start now? Yes, Yari. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. And welcome back to our last lecture on the Patana law of causal relations in our daily life. So uh, sorry to keep you waiting. Uh, then not taking much of our time, I will move on to our um, lecture. So last week, I was trying to touch upon the law of causal cause and effect or the dependent origination, uh, which I couldn't finish due, due to some uh, technical uh, inconveniences. So comparing to the, or talking about the law of cause and effect, last week we have already seen that there are altogether three kinds of teaching in which the Four Noble Truths is the most com size or the most summarized form uh, which explain about cause and effect and for the cause um, we can see that the cause of suffering and the way leading to the cessation of suffering these are the cause and the effect being suffering and the cessation of suffering and another teaching which is neither very much concise or not very much in detail that is the Padeja Samobhada. Uh, in that Padeja Samobhada, the Buddha has explained, and the Buddha himself has reflected this Padeja Samobhada before or just prior to the attainment of the enlightenment. There we can have um, two kinds of teaching. The one is the in the ascending order, like because of the ignorance, there is the uh, volitional activities, it means because we did not know, we did many actions, both good and bad, or wholesome and unwholesome in our past. And um, Sankara Bajaya Venyanam, because of our action, mostly um, more of the uh, positive or the wholesome karma, then we are born as a human being. This is how Sankara Bajaya Venyanam arises. This is what we call ascending order or the Anu Loma order. And in the reverse order, when the ignorance ceases, then there is no more Sankara. It means in the Arahanda, with the cessation or the, with the total eradication of the ignorance, which is latent or uprooted, Anusaya or Anusaiti in our mental continuum. So when it is totally ceased or come to the cessation, there is no more activities. That's why even though the Arahants or the highest noble person perform the um, wholesome deeds or the meritorious deeds, it is just uh, counted to be the functional. It means it will not produce result. So that is the meaning. Then when the ignorance ceases, the volitional activities or the Sankara also ceases. 
when there is no more sankara, definitely no more rebirth, right? So, aveja niroda, sankara nirodo. And then, when there is no more volitional activities or with the cessation of the volitional activities, no more rebirth, sankara niroda, venyana nirodo. So, this is the um, reverse order, right? So, this is how the Bhattaja Samobhada explained. Then, when coming to the Bhattana, Last week, since last week, we have seen that this patana or the causal relations, it has one more component, which is very significant and which no other teaching on the cause and effect shares. So that is the in addition to the cause, which in Pali we call pachaya. So at least we got to remember this word pachaya, okay? In Burmese, we call pisi. And then effect, that is the Pajaya is the cause, Obana is the arising. So result that arises because of the cause, that is the Pajaya Obana, that is the effect or the result that is caused or bring about or produced by this cause. And more importantly, the conditional forces or the causal efficacy of the condition. So this is what Patana explained. So this cause uh, conditional forces or the causal effic efficacy we call pachaya sati. Okay, sati means this forces efficacy or the power. So, and, and here we have the overview of the um, conditional relations patana. So, that is the detailed exposition of the interrelation between mental and material phenomena in various ways. I hope that you would remember this time. At the very beginning of our first lecture, then we have seen Abhidhamma teaching is the Nama Rupa Parekcheda Gata. That is differentiation or discernment or analysis of mind and matter. So our physical body which is composed of the five aggregates, or in another way, mind and matter, is just mere functioning of this phenomena. So understanding this will lead to the um, removal or dispelling of the illusions of the self, soul, and uh, being, or the individual, atta, jiva, and bogala, right? So here, three main components of Vatana. Here, as I have explained, the first one, conditioning state or cause. So the cause is used in or expressed or explained in another word. That is the conditioning forces. It is something that does, right? That is the Pachaya Dhamma. So how does the cause recreate or produce another result or effect? So here it is explained. The phenomena that functions another phenomena, that means the cause, it may by producing them. The first one and another one supporting or reinforcing them, right? So it means that you grow a plant. What do you have to do? That is like you try to um, nurture the plant. You have to take care of it, you water it and you give sort of like uh, chemicals like fertilizer or whatever a nutriment the tree or the plant would need, you would provide that. In that way, you try to take care of the tree so that it grows well and it is um, blooming and it also bear fruit. So when the cause produce effect, they are the based on these criteria it will form that is producing one fact, another one supporting, creating the conditions to grow well, and then reinforcing them, making it stronger. And another one conditionally arisen state or effect, that is the Pajaya Upana, and the conditioning forces or the condition Pajaya Sati. So it means, Patana means particular way in which the cause produce or support the effect or the how the cause reinforce the effect or the result, that is the meaning. I mean, it sounds rather technical at the outset, but I hope that with the um, example that we will have it later, you will have better understanding of this. 
on last week, we have also studied that among the profound teachings of the Buddha, this Padeja Samobhada, and we also have this uh, Bhattana. So it is actually very deep and very wide. And what I'm just giving is like a taste or just giving you um, a menu or just a catalog of it so that later you can explore further. Sorry. 24 conditions. So that is the, uh, the first one is the root condition, Ketu Pejaya. That is how the root of the tree, it make the tree stronger. When we say the tree along with the branches, the leaves and the fruits and the flowers as well. Another one object condition that is the Aramana Pejaya. So we would see that the mind is never without the object. The mind is always without the object and how the object would predominate us. So this is the meaning. So in this way, here I have given you a list of the 24 conditions Pajaya. So here um, I, I will go one by one. The first one is the Hetu Pajaya. Hetu Pajaya root condition. We have already learned about the six kinds of roots. Three unwholesome roots, that is loba, craving, attachment, clinging, dosa, animosity, hatred, uh, dislike, and then uh, sort of this um, disappointment, upsetting, depression, all this uh, belong to this dosa, and moha, not knowing what should be done, what should not be done, that is the moha. So jada rooted in those we call like jada rooted in greed, rooted in hatred, rooted in delusion. So when we talk about the plant, which has strong root and which has, um, doesn't have strong root, those with the strong root, because they can um, go deeper into the earth, it cannot be easily shaken or it cannot be easily removed. In the same way, those jada that are with the roots are considered to be strong type of jadas. And on the contrary, down there in the first column, you might see uh, in the third line, you might see two columns, three wholesome roots and three indeterminate roots. Wholesome roots we know by these three, either wholesome or indeterminate, we refer to the aloba, non-greed or anti-greed, Adosa, non-hatred or anti-hatred, that also where uh, metta is part of adosa, and non-delusion or mo moha, that is the penya or wisdom. Because you know, these three kind of roots, aloba, adosa, and amoha, when they are together with the kusala or wholesome jada, they are called wholesome root. But Please note, they can also arise with the functional consciousness. For example, functional consciousness means consciousness in the Arahanta. Because Arahanta is the highest noble person who have totally eradicated, who have completely destroyed the mental defilements so that there is no rebirth for that person in that even though they perform meritorious deeds, it is not termed as the kusala, but kiriya, just mere doing or functional. Because they're not going to born, they do not need any result for the next life. So Arahan also cultivate, yes, compassion or the appreciative joy or the loving kindness. So when Arahans um, cultivate compassion that may beings be liberated very soon, from this COVID-19, for example, that jada is known as the Giriya jada, and it is termed as the indeterminate. Indeterminate in the sense that in Pali, it is abhyagata. Abhyagata literally mean not expounded as kusala, neither expounded as kusala nor akusala. So it refers to by abhyagata, we refer to the functional, that is the Kiriya Jeda and the resultant, that is the Vipaka Jeda. 
So when they arise in the arahant, these roots, they are termed as indeterminate roots. That's it. They, they are the same, actually. So on the left column, in the condition, we have these six kinds of roots, but we understand that they arise um, one at a time, like greed, hatred, and delusion. One at a time, for delusion, there is the, um, they are always in our background. Even now we are discussing Dhamma, delusion is latent and lying under the surface within us. It is not prominent, but they are there at the background, like the gangster. He, are, he, he won't come up to the public, but he is just controlling from the background and his team is walking. So when we say there is greed or loba, there is greed. And in addition to that, we have delusion morha as well. So this is the meaning. And on the right column, conditioned state, that is the 71 rooted consciousness, sahe to gajeda. We, um, at least we know that there are 89 jedas. And that Shaida has been classified in various ways. Another way of classification is by means of root or Jada with root and Jada without root. So we have among the 54 Jada that arise mostly in our human plane or let's say the gamma plane, we also have the rootless or Ahituka Jadas. So apart from that eating Ahituka Jada, the remaining because they are together with root, it means along either with loba, dosa, or moha, or aloba, adosa, and ma'a, moha. Simply, they are called as the rooted consciousness. So when we say about consciousness, consciousness never arises alone, but always together with the mental states. That's why here we take the maximum number. So on the right column, in number two, we can see 52 mental states. So except moha in the moha mula jeda. And another one, rupa as well, matters born of rooted consciousness. And number four, matters born of karma at rebirth. So it sounds very technical, but let's have this example. Suppose I'm angry, how do I look like? There is the angry mind. My mind is rooted in anger, right? Then um, my face, also changes and so is my voice. And maybe I, I would be looking like trembling and my eyes would become red or may become watery because I, I, I'm angry and my voice is like um, uh, trembling and my hands might be shaking and my blood, blood pressure is going high and I have headache and suddenly I also have stomach ache. It means how the doors out anger bring changes to our physical body. This is the meaning. So it means that by root condition, we got to understand that when there is any one of these six roots or either some roots present in us, then because the mind rooted in the mind, there are some changes in our physical body, right? And in the same way, what happened when you practice meditation? you feel so light and peaceful in your body. So your body is relaxed, your mind is relaxed, you relax your face, like you, you relax the nerves and you might have done it many times. And how do you feel? You feel light, there is lahuda, right? Your mind is soft, not rigid anymore, mududa. And then kamenyata, you are ready to do any, anything good, either to continue meditation or to do dana, or to listen to the Dhamma or to share your Dhamma or to you rejoice in the marriage shared by others and so on. So this is how the mind brings changes to the physical body as the root condition that is the Hetu Pejaya, okay? So here, just for some uh, introduction, here I have quoted some Pali words because um, in the Patana text, we have altogether five volumes uh, over 2,000 pages, then um, the f we have these 24 conditions that has been enumerated in brief. After that, we have what we call Pejaya Nedesa. 
that is sort of like medium teaching, we have to say. Actually, there is no word as such, but I try to uh, make it simple, you know. These five sets of five volume set of Patana has been summarized, or these 24 conditions has been summarized um, in this, what we call Pejaya Nadesa, and I have uh, extracted from that. And we, you know, people are fond of reciting that. Some understand well, and some can recite well, but some are also doing to gain merit and to have some uh, concentration of mind or just to pay respect to the Buddha or uh, just to have some good fortunes in life. And people are reciting Patana for many um, conditions, on many conditions. Um, so this is uh, what I have extracted from that. So it says, please see in the third line, I hope you can read. Or if not, you can just listen. He do. The first one, the first line, sorry, he do. He do me. It refers to all the six roots. What happened? That root, he do, sambayogda ganan damana. Sambayogda associated. It means it existed together. Damanam, dama. So the dama that associate with that he do. Right? And then it refers to the uh, consciousness and the mental states. For example, you are doing kusala, meditation, or observing uh, precept, or giving charity, then your jada is the kusala jada. And that kusala jada associate with a group of mental states. This is what we call sampayogda dhamma. So when we recite Bhattana, it is important we recite um, carefully he do Sometimes I have heard of some people reciting very quickly and uh, even somewhat seem to have swallowed, somewhat seem to have disappeared on the way because um, they're doing so first. So at least each and every word should be pronounced clearly. Yes, you can do faster. As for some people, they are very bright and intelligent and they, they can recite faster. It does not mean that those who recite slow word are not bright and intelligent. It depends on their inclination, on their desire. But what is important is that each and every one should be pronounced or articulated clearly so that the meaning uh, di didn't get um, disright or disright meaning like the meaning didn't get lost. Sorry. So, and then apart from this Jada and Jidasika, dam samotana nenja rubanam. Samotana, that cause, rupa. The physical changes that is caused by that kusala jada, let's say aloba, adosa, and amoha, what happened? He do pechiye na pechiyo. It's related by root condition, so this is the meaning. So it would recite that way. He do pechiyo di, he do, he do sambiyok daganam, damanam, so this is how we understand. I won't recite all. This is just some uh, sample if you are not yet familiar. Then moving on to another one, Aramana Pechio. We have all together 24 conditions. You know, there are different ways of explaining these conditions. Uh, some teachers, uh, they try to make a group, form a group like how mind is related to mind, how mind is related to matter, and how matter is related to mind and so on. They form that group and they teach that way. But for me, I think that um, since this is the introduction and also to the uh, application of Patana, I think I would go each condition one by one. So uh, let me move on to another, Aramana Pechia, that is the object condition. So you might see that I have many slides today. Actually, some slides may not be necessarily to be written here, but to recall your memory and to have a clear understanding of the, um, these conditions, then I have made quite a lot. So actually, when we talk about the Aramana Pechia or the Object, object condition, 
you know, the nature of the nature of consciousness is the awareness of the object. It means when we talk about object condition, then we always think in relation to the nature of consciousness. Because the nature of mind is simply knowing the object, awareness of the object, cognizing the object. So when we talk about mind, we cannot leave aside object. And in the same way, when we come to the object, of course, we got to know this is the nature of the mind, right? Then uh, along with the consciousness, then, uh, sorry, uh, we have mental states, those that have to depend on consciousness for arising. It means that consciousness never arises alone, but always together with the mental states, at least seven universal, which I will come back later. So when we say that this is my mind is happy or my mind is like uh, confused or I'm doubtful, there is always a combination of consciousness, jada and mental states, jada sika, working or existing or relating to each other. So this is very important and very fundamental principle of the mind or what is expounded by the Abhidhamma. So consciousness and mental state, they arise together, they pass away or they perish together and they take the same object in the same base. And when we study about mental states, I remember that I have given this simple example. Um, the students who go to the same institution, for example, and since they take the same specialization, they go to the same class. So their class timing arises at the same time. Um, their class start at the same time, right? Starting of the class is the same and the finishing or the um, break time of the class is also the same. And also they have the same objective of learning that arts or whatever technology or medicine or um, whatever, and they have the same classroom. So we have this example. Then, as the nature of consciousness or jada is knowing the object, when the jada knows or take the object, mental states also take the same object, right? When the jada, now you are hearing me, then what is the object? It is my voice. And I'm looking at you. I'm looking, I, I can see few people. Uh, I'm making sure that they understand or they are listening to me or what they are doing. Because um, normally we have the physical classroom and when I am in the classroom, I look at the face of uh, all the students and see if they are with me. So uh, what I'm doing is also the same. Like I'm, I'm looking at some of the participants who are in my life vision. So my vision, when the mind takes that visible object that is you or your movement and the, the mental states also the same object. So there are altogether six kinds of object and it cover all the ultimate realities. It means 89 jadas, 52 mental states or jadasika all the 28 rupas, of course, there is Nibbana and Penyati as well. So the nature of Aramana that we have already uh, seen once, like a disabled person, it means who cannot walk very well or properly or very strongly. What does that person has to do? That person has to take the help of the walking staff or a rope line or a steel frame or something to walk. So in the same way, the mind take the object as the dependence. Uh, later, you will see that many conditions are relating to each other. When there is the hearing or seeing consciousness, there are many relations working together, not only the object condition, right? We will understand later as we come, as we go along. So that consciousness and mental states depend on the six objects for awareness. So this is the Aramana Bajaya. And altogether we have six objects. The first one, visible object. So everything that can be seen with the eye is included in that visible object. And so is the sound. 
either pleasant sound or unpleasant sound or the sound that is clear or not clear, everything pertaining to that sound, smell, taste, and tangibility. So when we talk about tangibility or tangible object, we are talking about the chapter on the Ruba. And I hope that you remember the four great essentials, what in Pali we call Mahabuddha, or in Nyama we call Mahabho, that constitute Batawi, Abo, Tejo, and Wayo. By Batawi, we refer, we refer to the nature of hardness, softness, lightness, and heaviness. Abo, water elements, cohesion, fluidity, liquidity, oozing, composing. These are what is represented by this Abo. And Tejo, heat and cold, or another one we also call as Udu, right? And then um, Nutriment Ahara. Then, this is what we have recently studied in the Rupa chapter, because Rupa come later than the Jada and Jada Siga, and I hope you still have, at least when you remember, you still, uh, when you hear the words, you still remember, or you could recall your memory back, hopefully. Then, apart from this object, the remaining object, it goes to the Dhamma object. So you have to, now you have to match the first column with the second and the third. It is like that. So now we can see number one, visible object, Vana or Rupa. In Pali, we also call Rupa Ramana or Rupa Yo, right? Then, um, Number six, by number five, tangibility or tangible object is composed of the three Mahabuddha, Batawi, earth element, hardness, softness, etc. Dejo, heat and cold, wire, motion, moving, supporting, right? And when we come to the Dhamma object, all the remaining Rupa, because I hope at least you remember visible object, sound, smell, taste, tangibility, all these Aruba, because um, they undergo obvious changes. Then all the sense organs, like eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and subtle matters, including abo, and all jadas, jadasikas, nibbana, and penyati, they belong to the dhamma object. So it is very right, wide ranging. Then all these. This is the conditioning state, that is the cause. And by on the most right column, we have conditioned state, that is the cause or effect, 89 jadas or 52 jadasikas. So it means that we can also, now we can also look from the right side. What is the object of our mind? When we say our mind, that is along with the consciousness and mental states, nothing more than these six objects. So this is what this object um, condition tries to explain. We have this um, example. So today I have few charts and I use the uh, blue color in the white background. Uh, it may be not very uh, convenient to print out, but I think for the time being, you can see this, or at least you can uh, listen to me. This is how eye consciousness arises, depending on the visible object. So on the left, we have two. The first one is the eye base, our eye, sensitive part of our eye, right? And visible object. Now I'm talking that I'm saying that now we have the chart. Then you pay attention to that, then you see that. Right? So this chart become your visible object because you are looking at this chart. So when this chart get into contact with a sensitive part of our eye or what the science call the retina, we have eye consciousness. And along with that eye consciousness, we have a group of mental states, which we call seven universal. The first one being contact, pasa, feeling, vedana, perception, or taking note, that is the senya. And then the fourth one, we have motivation or volition, that is the jidana. And then one pointedness, the mind being on the, ob on, being on the object, right? Ekekada, uh, one pointedness. Um, when that one pointedness is 
develop, it becomes concentration and it becomes a jhana factor as well. And life fertility, that is the protection system, and attention, that is the manasikara. So um, this is what we are having right now. Looking at this chart, along with that eye consciousness or seeing consciousness, we have all these seven factors, at least seven factors working together. And these eight become the basic unit of mind. Then we can relate back between this visible object and the eye consciousness. Then this visible object is the object for the eye consciousness. So is the sound for the ear consciousness. And so is the tangibility, like hardness, softness, we can touch. Uh, now I, I'm touching the table, I can feel it is hard. And I'm sitting in the chair, I also feel the hardness. And as I'm sitting for like over half an hour, I feel the warmth as well, right? So this is how the natures are working together. Then moving on to that, Aramana Bejaya. Then again in the, this Bejaya um, Nedesa, it says that Rupayadanam, by Rupayadanam, it refers to the visible object, the object you are seeing, right? Chakku Vinyana Datuya is related to eye consciousness. So eye consciousness doesn't arise alone, but together with the associated mental states, it is represented by Dam Sampayodaka Nanja Dhamanam, Sampayodak Dhamma, associated Dhamma exist together. Aramana Pachi not Pachiyo by way of object condition. So this is the meaning. And the same should be applied to the sound sadayadanam, smell, gandayadanam, this rasa yadanam, and then tangible object, putabayadanam, manoda duya, the next one, dan sambyodaga nenja damanam, aramana pachi na pachiyo. Then together Sabi Dhamma, all the Dhamma. Um, all the Dhamma, they are related to the remaining object, either in terms of mind element, Mano Dhatu or Mano Vinyana Dhatu. So what do we have here? Here, I, I would like to introduce you with the thought process. Actually, we are rather short of time, but at least I should introduce you with this thought process. It means when we talk about seeing or hearing, smelling, tasting, and touching, let's say sense consciousness, which we are experiencing in our daily life, it goes in this series of consciousness. It cannot skip the any order. It must be in this order as well. Like when you go to the uh, office or when you go to the supermarket ball for buying, some people might overtake you and you are in a queue, but that person overtake you and go in front of you. But this Jada, they cannot do that way. It must be very systematic, must go according to this order, right? Then the first one, um, the first three moments, you can see fast bawenga, another one, vibrational bawenga, and the third one, arrest bawenga. So it represents three moments of bawenga. I hope you remember. Let's recall our memory. What is the very first moment in our life? It means how does our life begin? Our life begins with rebirth, right? Rebirth or rebirth linking, which we call a descending. And we are born as a human being mainly because of our previous kusala or wholesome karma. So that jada is also resultant of wholesome, which we call karma vipaka or maha vipaka. Okay, uh, please note this one at least. Our rebirth linking jada is the one of the eight that maha vipaka jada, great resultant or the uh, sense fear resultant consciousness. And that jada, when it arises for the first time, it is known as rebirth linking. But that the jada doesn't stop. It means that jada arises, it exists and it passes away, but the same type of jada, we would say, not the same jada. The same type of jada continue throughout the whole life. 
And as it continues arising in our life, it is given the name of Bawenga. Bawenga means Bawa and Enga. You know, Enga means factor. You might have part of this term, Janenga, factor of Jana, Megenga, factor of Mega, Bojenga, factor of the body or the enlightenment, right? Enga means factor. And then life means our life, right? Bawa, Bawa is life. So as it continues arising in our life, it is given the name of life continuum Bawenga. So its function is to continue life. So here we have this thought process. And even at the beginning of this thought process, you can see this Bawenga. So in between the thought processes, now you are hearing me and you're also looking at me you know you are sitting in the chair or sofa if you pay attention, right? These jada, we, all, we are knowing all these. But because they run so fast, we think that we know everything at the same time, right? You think that you can see me, you can hear me, then you know you are sitting in the chair and if you're hungry, you might be having coffee or it might be some meal time for you, you might be eating something. In that case, you might get some smell as well. You think that everything is happening at the same time, but actually it is not. Only one jada can arise at a time. And when it arises, that sense consciousness arises, it comes in a series, not alone, not just one itself. Then in between that um, thought process of what we call VT, we have this moments of Bawenga. So that's why now we have three moments of Bawenga as the first, the second, and the third. After that, we have five door adverting. Then uh, first, let me read um, the, the, the type of consciousness. Later, I will explain you, right? The first one is the past Bawenga. Then we will look horizontally. Abbreviation I have used, PSBH because later I have draw this uh, symbol so that um, we can see better. So for that symbol or the diagram, I have to use the abbreviation. It sounds so small, but later you can um, zoom in and you will be able to see, I hope. After three moments of Bawenga, then we have five door adverting consciousness. Then number five, we have seeing, then receiving, investigating, determining the ninth one, it is most important, dynamic or the impulsion, which we call Jawana, okay? You may not be able to remember everything, but this dynamic is important. At least please take note of that, number nine. Because we are very much interested in Kusala and Akusala, right? So this Kusala and Akusala arise, arises at this dynamic or impulsion moment, which in Bali we call Jawana because it repeat for seven times. You can also see on the fourth column, time or moment. And the next one, registration, that is taking that object. Then we can have this example. Then um, now you are joining the class. Then suddenly your phone rang. Your phone rang. You didn't, uh, pick up suddenly. So, because you are here involved in this Dhamma class, but you know that there is there would be some important call coming and inevitably you have to answer or you have to check the message or whatever. Okay, now the signal is coming, the vibration or the tone, the soft tone is coming, right? Then one moment pass by. It means you are still involving in the class you cannot leave from this class yet, and you cannot answer that call yet. In between, there is one very short moment passes by. This is the past Bawenga. In Pali, we call Adida Bawenga. But at least you got alarm, right? You got alarm. There is the signal, the, the vibration or the sound, ding or something, then um, vibration. Then, then your mind or you certainly moved. Okay, this is the the symbol or the alarm is coming. This is the vibrational bowenga. 
but suddenly you are so much involved in the class that you couldn't go immediately. Then one moment passes by. After that, you stop this class for a while. This is a rest bawenga. Okay, you take a break from this class. Then what do you do? You pay attention to your phone or you pay attention to the door since the sound is from there. That is five door adverting consciousness. In Bali, we call Penja Dwara Vajana. Penja means five, Dwara means door, Avijana means turning. Turning the mind towards the five door. So it is the metaphorical usage, right? Then even without turning your head, you can pay attention to that sound, right? It means your mind is pay attention. That's why in the public places, attention, please. May I have your attention, please? Because you are doing some work and your, att your attention is not there. So that announcer trying to get your attention, right? So because we have five sense doors, eye door, ear door, nose door, tongue door, and body door, it means the five sense organs, they are metaphorically known as the doors or dwara. So uh, we have also seen that when we learn about the Rupa chapter, then it is uh, given a general name. It didn't say attention in the eye door, not ear door. It is not given separate name, attention in the five door. It just give a general name and it concerned with the other five senses. So when you pay attention, what happened? Either you see or you hear. Now you see the message, for example. You receive that. Then investigate, you read it. What is that? And you determine, yes, this is important. Or this is not important, you determine that. Then after that, there is dynamic. Then you, you think about that or there are some thought arising in that. Right? Maybe like you got you are happy or you, you got disturbed or there, there must be some sort of um, activities there in the mind. So this is what is represented by this dynamic moment. And it runs for altogether seven times. So if it is a very good news, then you are very happy. It, you are very happy. It can be either with kusala or it can be either with like, um, if there is sort of attachment or clinging, it can be loba mula jawana or it can be maha kusala or something, right? Or maybe you get some good news that someone you have helped has been going along very well. Then you are very happy. Maha kusala jeda arises seven times in your mind. And another one, registration. The Pali word is the dadharamana, dam aramana, dam means that that aramana means object. So tadaramana literally means that object. That object means the object that has been taken or apprehended by this javana. It means the dharamana also take the same object, right? So this is how we can understand this uh, thought process. And like um, in the commentary, we have another example to make you clearer. A man is sleeping under a mango tree and he has covered his uh, body with a maybe uh, with a blanket or with some shawl. Then suddenly a mango fell down and he, he got awake. Right? Then before he got up and checked what the sound was, there is one moment that passes by. That is the past bawenga, right? A tida bawenga. And then his mind got shaken. Then vibrational bawenga. He, his, his sleep got disturbed, let's say. That is the bawenga jalana. And then he stopped his sleep. It means he wake up, arrest bawenga. So his former action was stopped. His former action of sleeping was stopped. And now he pay attention. Then that is five door adverting consciousness. Then um, after when paying attention, he see the mango. That is the uh, or seeing consciousness or eye consciousness. Then he pick it up, he pick up the mango, receiving consciousness, and he smell it. Okay, that sound very fresh. So he just wipe it uh, with his shawl. Then, okay, this is ripened and this is still fresh. I will eat it, determine. And after that, he enjoy the mango. That is the dynamic moment, Javana moment. 
and what has been left over, then he tried to slit a uh, taste and he swallowed up. This is like the Dharamana or registration. Okay, moving on to that. Here, thought process and idol. Yeah, what I have tried to explain is the visible object is relating to eye or seeing consciousness. The first one as the object. So here, you might notice the first one. BSBH means pass for when God. one moment of a when God passes by, right? After that, we have BV vibrational boenga. Then after that, we have arrest boenga. Then adverting means attention. Then there is seeing. So this object that arises even before you see the process started already, right? So this process to be taken from the past boenga moment because uh, it belongs to the same series. Then you can see that this mango in the second example is the visible object for the eye. So in that it is the aramana. And you can see this mango has been dropped before you see, right? The mango is already dropped before you see. So the mango is there already. And we call this being born earlier, that is the pure jada. Okay, later we will come back again. The mango already existed before you see. Okay, the mango dropped from the tree already on the ground. Even before you pay attention, mango is already there. It may mango existed earlier. So literally we say born earlier, existed earlier. Pure jada, pure me before. Right? And then while it is present, he see the mango while it is present. Suppose some, maybe like some birds or the some crows or some animal take the mango before he see it won't be there anymore. But when he see the mango me, he see it when it is present, when it is there. This is the ati bajaya. And then avigada bajaya number four, non-disappearance. Present me, it is still there, it does not disappear. Right, so this is the meaning. So this is how the uh, thoughts, uh, thought process go. So in this way, we can see that conditions are relating to each other. What I'm focusing now is the object condition aramana, in that mango is the visible object, right? Then that mango already existed before he sees. That's why it is known as the Jata existed earlier or born earlier, right? Then I consciousness. And you see that mango while it is present. That is the ati presence, ati condition. It is included in this one of these 24 conditions. Then number three and four, ati and avigada, present and disappearance is all the same. Just the, the wording is slightly different. Maybe some people understand this presence condition ati better, while some uh, may be clearer with the, what the usage non-disappearance. It means like given synonymous term, like I use a lot of synonymous term as I explain when I said, uh, when I explain about rupa, rupa means changing, changing means transforming, transforming means perishing, perishing means spoiling. Uh, um, changing from one condition, original condition to another, like this. So at least there must be some word that you understand better. And that might be different from one another. So that's why though Ati and Avigata present and disappearance are um, different in wording, all the cause and condition and all the phenomena are exactly the same. They are identical. Okay, I have to move on because a lot more to go. Then Understanding of this object condition. What do we gain by understanding this object condition? So eye sensitivity is the rupa, right? In our eye, our sense organ, our eye. Even in the eye, we have already studied that eye, there are two types of eye. The eyeball itself, that is the Sambara Jaku, it doesn't have the um, by eye sensitivity, it refers to a small part, which we call retina, the sensitive part of the eye. So um, suppose I got damage in my eye, 
if the retina is not imaged, not detect, not spoiled, I can I will be able to see it. So since uh, eye sensitivity is ruba, and visible object is also ruba. So when these two matters or ruba contact with each other, eye consciousness is produced. That is the nama. Why do we have to reflect like this? So this reflect near functioning of mind and matter. Sometimes you see something and you got very upset. Or you hear some people talking ill of you, then you got upset. Because there is I. That person, that person, the person is there. He or she is talking ill of me. I is there, right? Because, so what do we do? We carry that along. I, I will continue this in the next one, a deep body or predominant condition. You, your thought has been overwhelmed with that sound. People who talk ill of me, that person talk ill of me, that person is never good, has never done good to me, has never done good to my uh, dear ones, and always disturbing me and will never understanding me, and I wish that I will be always away from that person. The thought has been overwhelmed with that sound the whole day, for example. Sometimes it can continue even up to many days. What happened? We suffer. That person may or may not even know that. And I, I'm here suffering myself because that person, I take that person as person and I take myself to be I. Then what should we do? Maybe even though I didn't do anything wrong now, there may be some past karma or there may be some misunderstanding that that person that take talking to me that way. And if I will be able to reflect this is the sound me, not that person, the words or the sound, this is simply rupa. And that person say that and I hear that. So just mere functioning of mind and matter. Then when we reflect that often, or when we develop that habit, we suffer less. We have to make a habit. It doesn't come, uh, I reflect one time and it doesn't come for life. Or I just reflect one time, but later anger will come disappointment will come. So we have to make a habit. So when we could reflect it often and when we understand the mere working nature of mind and matter, what do we do? We dispel wrong view of self, soul, person, and also creator. Because some people believe that it has been created by somebody. There is the creator who will um, bear the, our evil consequences, right? then when we take that way, we become very irresponsible. Like I will do anything I like, then the creator will save us. So um, that leads to the wrong view and it is uh, dangerous, right? Because if you eat, you will be full and you will have energy, right? If you eat and I don't have energy, I don't gain any energy basically. So what I do, that result I will have to bear, I will have to suffer myself then also can reduce attachment and also understanding of impermanent suffering and non-soul nature. So this is the benefit that we gain by contemplating the working nature of Nama and Rupa by way of the object condition, for example. Another one, predominance condition, Adipati. So Adipati means supreme chief king who is the highest authority, who has the highest authority and two kinds of predominance. Object predominance. Object is Aramana, predominance is Adipati. This is the third condition. We can see two are combined here. Object predominance. The sound, that person talk ill of me. I have been taking that seriously. Then it become outstanding object that draw my attention, right? But here, so that object can be either something that you esteem, cherish, or strongly desire, or it can be strongly disliked, like the sound that somebody talked ill of me. That sound would be influencing or overwhelming me because it is so prominent. So the object, the sound, dominate me as the object. This is what is meant by object predominance. Um, so this 
condition is identical with object decisive support, Aramanu Banesia, Aramana and Upanesia. So you can see another combination, so you will understand better. So at least I hope that you understand this one object predominance. It can be something uh, very pleasant. Uh, you have been to um, a virtuous place like, for example, Magnificent Sri Dagong Pagoda, or you visited Bagan, or maybe you, you visited Angkor Wat or Emerald uh, Buddha or whatever, then you feel so revered and venerated in the mind. Then you often, that object often appear in your mind because this is predominating your mind, your thought. This is object predominance. Another one, Sahaja Dadipati. So Adipati is twofold, object predominance. And another one is the born together predominance. Nascence. So the, the English word nascence, when I check, it say born or birth, go mean together, born together. So we will have something like go nascence, that is born together, pre nascence, that existed earlier, yeah. right? Or post nascence, that will come later. So, sorry, we will see that three words. So among that cognizance, we have all together four factors. That is the chanda, desire. We know desire. Desire that is, pre, that is um, predominant, predominating. So what kind of desire? Like, uh, yes, I want to um, recite Bhattana. I want to practice meditation, not just by talking. Burning desire, very strong desire, which you will really materialize this, or you will implement that thought, the such kind of desire, right? Then um, when there is such kind of desire, chanda is a mental state, jitasika, and it is included in the particular group. It means chanda can be either wholesome or unwholesome. Like uh, the, the wish to listen to dhamma, the wish to help others, uh, the wish to share merit, the wish to uh, offer service to others. These are wholesome desire, like unwholesome desire, desire to harm others, talk ill of others, backbite others, desire to take other people's possession, like stealing, committing, telling lies. These are unwholesome desire. So it is uh, part particular, I mean, they, they are sort of common or the anya samanya, neutral type. They would belong to the uh, when they are with good mind, this is the good desire. When with evil intention, then evil desire, as such. So, chanda dipati chanda sambayok daganam damanam dam samotana nenja rubanam adipati pachaye na pachaye. It means when there is chanda, there are some jada that arises with that. And that chanda also brings changes to the, uh, have some effect on the physical body. Right? When you are doing good, then you feel so peaceful. And like um, when you want to harm others, when I want to harm others because of anger also, as explained in the root condition or here to Pajaya, there is something um, uncomfortable or some prominent changes in my physical body as well. So we have another one that is the effort or vidya or energy. Again, this effort is the ardent effort to, ardent means very strong effort, effort to accomplish. The Bodhisattva or the Buddha to be, before attainment of the enlightenment, after he has already um, left the practices, the extreme practices, then the Buddha was, um, has made the strong, very strong determination, let all the flesh or the blood dry up from my body and even let the body die. I won't give this practice. I won't give up this practice, sort of urgent effort, right? Here also, I believe that you also have all made this urgent effort to join this class because uh, you might have many commitments and your time is also precious. At least you try to share this time because of your urgent effort to learn. Dhamma, what the Buddha has taught. 
And I also have to make effort uh, as I prepare the class, right? So that is the ardent effort. So this effort also can be a predominant factor. That is the viriya and adipati, we call viriya adipati, right? Effort predominance. Another one, jeda, consciousness. That is another one, strong. People say, oh, he or she has very strong mind, very determined, determined mind. Once making decision or determination, will try to accomplish and never give up such kind of mind. And another one, we mamsa, that is the wisdom. So here is a good translation, investigating wisdom, the wisdom that investigated, right? So in this way, predominance condition can be for chanda, desire, viriya, effort or energy, and then jada, consciousness, and we mamsa, investigating wisdom. So here, um, along with that, there are some Jawana moments, which we call um, Sadi Badi Jawana, because in the effect, it is there. So I just try to give you an account of that. And altogether, we have 55 Jawanas. I say that when I started introducing with this um, thought process, I say, I hope at least we will remember that time Jawana. Jawana normally terms for, runs for seven times. And Jawana literally mean running with force. Running with force. That's why um, dynamic is the translation of the rector Seattle. And mostly the books use the term impulsion but we're not very sure with what the impulsion means, dynamic, very active, or doing with force. So here we can see, loba dosa, we know that. Loba mula jawana, dosa mula jawana. It means in that thought process, either uh, we have strong liking or attachment, there is would be loba mula jawana, or when there is anger, dosa mula jawana, or sometimes we're, we're doing kusala, maha kusala jawana, right? And then maha kiriya, for the arahanta, whatever the perform merit, it is termed as the functional mahakiriya jeda. And if you attain jhana, then your merit will be rupa kusala. And if you are arahanta with the jhana attainment, that would be rupa kiriya jeda. And in rupa vajra plane, then they all, uh, most of them have the five aggregates. But in our rupa plane, means no physical body only mental state arises. And then Arupa, Kusala, Arupa, Kiriya, and the highest mega pala, uh, they, they all uh, belong to this um, Jawana. And along with the Adibadi, we have extracted three. That is the Hasito Bada, that is the small producing consciousness in Arahant. And there is a new term for you if you are new to Abhidhamar. And we have also, you might notice, we have also leave aside Moha Mula Jeda. So just to give you a count of that. Another one, proximity condition, Anandara Pajaya. So the same thought process, the same thought process. And here, can you see the arrow? Can you see the arrow and the uh, some abbreviation, REC. REC means receiving, right? Receiving. The man sleeping under the mango tree, he woke up, then he saw, pay attention, he saw the mango, he received it. And then he investigated. So I want to show you the connection between this receiving and investigating consciousness, right? Sampadejana and Sandirana. So, so I, I have this uh, diagram. Then receiving consciousness and investigating consciousness. They arise one after another without any gap or any interval between. Right? No interval at all. So this is what is meant by anandara. Anandara means interval or gap. Anandara means no gap, no, no, uh, no gap or no interval between. We can see that we have altogether 17, one seven cycles that represent 17, one seven chedas. 
all arises one after another without any gap in between. And they cannot skip the order as well. Right? So um, this manoda do. Manoda to refer to that receiving consciousness. Dam dama. Along with the consciousness, we have the mental states jetasida. And then mano vinyana datuya. By mano vinyana datu, we refer to the investigating consciousness. Dam sambyo daganja damana. Along with the associated jetasiga. Anandara pechiena pechio is related by proximity condition. Uh, so those who are new to Abhidhamma, the term would be new, like mind element and mind consciousness element. So here I have given you account. Manovinyana Dhatu Ming, um, remaining Jada except three Manor Dhatu and then sense consciousness. Sense consciousness means eye, ear, nose, tongue, and body consciousness. And since they are one is the result of wholesome, that is the Kusala Vipaka is five, Another result of unwholesome Agusala Vibhaga is five, so all together making ten. And Manodrara Vajana. By Manodrara Vajana, it refers to the attention of five door, attention consciousness in five door, Benjadrara Vajana, and this receiving Sampadejana. So this is how the analysis is made in the Jada chapter. And the main point I would like to share here is. Jadas in the thought process, or we can see all the 17 Jadas, they arise one after another without any gap or any interval. I've given you this because some people who recite this Pajaya uh, Nedesa, uh, it is there. I have extracted from there. What is the next one? The next one here. Seven moments of Javana, right here. I refer to the dynamic moment, seven moment of Jawana. So that is either Kusala or Akusala. It means Jawana may be either Kusala. If you are doing good, like let, let's say now studying Dhamma, we have Kusala Jada. So the following Kusala Jada, Jawana, is related to another one by means of the this proximity condition, it means we have seven moments of Zawajavana and there is no gap in between is that. So the former one is related to the first one, is related to the second one by proximity, no gap. And the second to the third, third to the fourth, fourth to the fifth, and so on. So it is uh, the meaning here. And another one, the next one, Samat Nandara. Contiguity uh, or immediacy condition. That is the Samat Nandara condition, right? So this is identical with Anandara. Only one word different. Anandara, no gap, no interval. Samat Nandara, so the word Sam is added. So all are exactly the same. And in the course, we can take all the Jadas and Jadasika. And except here, there is some exception death or Juti Jada of the Arahant, because Juti Jada of the Arahant may Arahant has no more life, so it won't produce effect. That's why it has to be reduced in the, excluded in the cause. Right? So that is the meaning here. I just go briefly and connaissance condition, that is the Saha Jada, born together, born together, existing together, that is the meaning, right? For example, consciousness and mental states are born together, like the flame and the light, which arises earlier together. When you lit the, the wick, then the flame is there. When the, the, the flame appear, the light also appear at the same time, existing together. But we have um, different categories here, like primary elements are born together, Mahabuddha. Earth element, water element, fire element, and air element, they are born together, meaning they are existing together in a group. We have one uh, basic, one principle in the rupa, that is the basic component of the rupa, which is composed of eight factors, four Mahabuddha, earth, 
water, fire, and air elements. Then we have visible object. Then we have sound, we have smell, and the nutritive essence, oja. So these eight are inseparable. Later, I will come up with this. So these primary elements, they are born together. They always depend on each other, always exist together. That is what is meant by born together. Uh, like the um, uh, family members, uh, they, they exist together, born together. Like um, mind and matter are born together and <clears throat> Jada produces changing in the body. That is the Jada Jarupa. It means like healthy and happy mind produces healthy body. And unhealthy mind brings some changes to become unhealthy body as well. So this is how they are connected. Here, four mental aggregates are mutually related to each other. Now we're going a bit more detail no? by, by, by this Saha Jata or connaissance condition. So in Pali, we call Jataro Kanda Arupino. Rupa, we know, is the physical body matter. Arupino, not physical body, just refer to mental. Jataro Kanda Arupino, it means four mental aggregates. Enya Menyam, uh, mutually. Sahajata, born together, existing together. So these 89 jadas and 52 mental states, because 89 jadas, um, they form the consciousness aggregate. Then I have been often re repeating it and people say that uh, I don't understand what is the Sankhara, right? Then feeling form aggregate itself, Vedana Kanda, and perception form aggregate itself, Sanya Kanda, and the remaining 50, mental states, that is the Sankhara Kanda. In the Sankhara Kanda, then we have this Loba, Dosa, Moha, all these are there, or your confidence Sada, or mindfulness Sati, and like attention, uh, Manasikara, motivation, it is there. And of course, we have compassion, we have appreciative join, then there is loving kindness, Lightness, softness, adaptability, all these are included in that Sankara Kanda, right? 50 mental state apart from the feeling and perception. And another one, four primary elements are also mutually related to each other. Here I have given you a detailed account. Chattaro Mahabuddha. Chattaro means four, Mahabuddha. Four primary elements or four great essentials. Enyamanyam, mutually. Sahajata, coexisting. So earth, water, fire. And here I have explained you, again, recall your memory, components of eight inseparable being, uh, what we call Avinek Boga. And this primary element, along with visible object or form, that is Vana, smell, Ganda, taste, Rasa, and nutritive essence, Oja. So when we study about Rupa, I have explained even in the smallest particle, these eight matters are existing. Maybe I, uh, I torn this tissue or I burn it, there is small powder. In that small powder, we have these eight qualities. Or maybe you, you break this, this mouse, right? And there is a powder. And in that powder also, we have this. And when the... Uh, chair has been broken into pieces, even in the smallest particle, it is there. That's why they are eight inseparable, known as eight inseparable. Another one, at the rebirth moment, mind and matter are related to each other by connaissance condition. So the Pali say, Aukantekane, Aukantekana mean, kana mean moment. Aukantekane mean at the moment of rebirth, but this and the moment. But here I use another synonymous term, nama rupam, mind and matter, enya menya, mutually, sahajata, coexisting. So at the moment of rebirth, mind refer to one of maha, eight maha vipaka jeda, let's say our patisandi jeda. And just now I say that when I explain Bawenga, that patisandi jeda has been continued in our life. And as it performs different function, it is given different name. At the very beginning, when it arises for the first time, because it link our past life with this present life, it is known as the rebirth linking Pati Sandi, 
right? And as it continue our life, it perform the function of continuing life. So it's given another name, life continuum. That is the Bawenga. And as it marks the end of our life, it is known as death consciousness to the Jada. So the same kind of Jada, I don't say the same Jada, because Jada arises and passes away, it is um, replaced by another one. So I don't see the same Jada, the same type of Jada. When it arises for the first time in life, it is known as Padisandi Jada. As it continues its life, it is known as the Bowenga Jada. And as it ends or uh, at its marks the end of this life, it is known as the death consciousness or Judy Jada, right? So along with that Jada, Jada never arises alone. We have the associated mental states. This is Nama at the moment of very first moment. And Rupa, by Rupa, we have studied in the Rupa chapter. Then at the very beginning, we started at the very tiny drop of water, Kalala, right? Clear water, the very tiny drop. Even in that water, there is the body decad. And either it started or to know already either male or female, and also the Hadea which or the basic decad already existed. So here I have explained by decad, it referred to a group of 10. In Pali, we call Dasaka, and there are 10 kinds of Rupa. So that 10 kinds of Rupa make eight inseparable, and we have Jivita, life faculty, and body sensitivity, that is the Kaya Pasada. So having this Kaya Pasada as the last one, that's why it is known as the Kaya Dasaka. So now by this time, I hope that you will understand that Abhidhamma is like a jigsaw puzzle as uh, clearly um, given an analogy by the former rector Siado, Siado Usilananda, that knowledge or the information from Jada and our understanding from Rupa and also from Gamma, Bhadeja Samobhada now become very much helpful and very much linking to each other, right? Before we uh, saw the clear picture, it is difficult to guess. And for now, for this class, I have to skip many parts, but I hope that at least you will be able to see some parts clearly, like this is the leaf, this is the flower, even though you may not be able to see the whole tree, but at least I do hope that you will be able to see some part and you will be able to like um, um, nominate it, nominate it me, what it is and what does it mean to us, right? Then moving on to the next one, we are still in the Sahajata or Conescence Condition and consciousness and mental states are related to matters. That is the Jeda Jeda Sika Dhamma. Jeda Samothana Nam Rubanam Sahada Jada Pajiye Na Pajiyo. So along with the Jeda and Jeda Sika, and there is also Rupa there. So um, this is the meaning. And another one, Mahabuddha Upada Rubanam, primary element are related to the dependent matter. Uh, we have learned about altogether 28 matters, which is basically classified into two. The first one is the primary element, Mahabuddha, and the remaining matter. Apart from this um, earth, water, fire, and air element, all the remaining matters like eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, visible object, sound, smell, taste, tangibility, the state of being male and female, nutritive essence, and all these, they belong to this dependent matter. So Mahabuddha Ubada Rubanam Sahajata Bajena Bajena. So how the four primary elements can exist together with the remaining um, dependent matter. Here we have this again come the components of the eight uh, inseparable. So better we are body jaw wire, four primary elements, and the other four of the basic unit being one not visible object, ganda smell. Rasa, taste, and oja. So the explanations are all, all, all there. 
Then the next one that is the neutrality condition. We are now in the seventh one. Uh, actually, they are the heading of each slide. And due to some uh, technical error, it doesn't appear. And I hope that <clears throat> it will appear as you print out or it, as you see. So if you cannot see, then let me know, please. So the cause and effect are all the same. It means all the consciousness, 89 consciousness and 52 mental states, they are mutually related to each other. That is Chattaro, Khanda, Arubino, Enyamanyam, Enyamanyam, Pachiye, Na Pachiyo. So it means that here for your understanding, in contemplating feeling, for example, in the Vipassana meditation, or even in our daily life, suppose there is some unpleasant feeling, then we try to contemplate, yes, this is unpleasant feeling because we don't want to carry it long time. We would like to see and understand these are the working natures of the phenomena itself. So what do we have to do? First, we have to know and see this is the feeling, just mere a feeling. So there is perception. If because we have noted this is sort of unpleasant thing or either pleasant thing, the perception is there. And the motivation, yes, it motivates, it motivates us. Yes, try to contemplate so that it won't stay long or something unpleasant or something painful that won't stay long and you won't suffer. So that sankara or jedana motivated. And along with mindfulness, we have to be mindful. Yes, as the feeling arises, we have to note this is the feeling. This is the unpleasant feeling. This is pleasant feeling. Or suppose this is the mind. Yes, this is the peaceful mind or this is the mind with anger or the mind with lust, raga or loba, right? In that we also need effort, viriya. It means how they are mutually relating. Because when we say that 89 jeda and 52 mental states, it sounds so technical, but what are these? Right? So they are mutually relating to each other. So that's why um, though the number seem to be uh, doesn't fit in or doesn't work, we also need to know the ingredients. Right? So if you don't remember, you can also refer to the note because sometimes I would just say the Sankara Kanda or the aggregate of mental formations. So this is the uh, application part that we got to understand this. So here mutual conditions mean like four primary elements, they are mutually related, but we are both Dejo and Wayo. And mind and matter at rebirth, they are also mutually related. You know, Alkante Kane, Nama Rupam, Enya Menya Pechie, Na Pechio, and Chadaro Mahabuddha, Enya Menya Pechie, Na Pechio. So if you're reciting Patana and if you don't know the meaning yet, it's better. Uh, to learn and understand so that you can really reflect on the nature. So this Patana relation, uh, condition or the relational, uh, conditional relation or this teaching on Patana is to be contemplated even in our daily life. Because it just explained about the working nature of the mind and matter, there is nothing more than that, nothing apart from that merely how the conditions are relating to each other and helping us, uh, supporting us, producing or reinforcing, making stronger. So this is the most important fact that we got to get from this. Another one, naysaya pejaya, dependence or support condition. Again, four mental aggregates are mutually dependent, but here, please see, mutually dependent. As they exist together, they are also depending on each other. The same dependence. Here, Chattaro, Kanda, Arubino, four mental aggregates, Enya, Menyam, mutually, Naysaya, dependent on each other. And then um, four primary elements are uh, mutually dependent and so are four mental aggregates, they are mutually dependent. As they exist, they take the same dependence. And again, mind and matter at rebirth are also mutually dependent. So you would see that there are lots of 
uh, repetition here, it means that when we see how mind and matter are related, it is more than one condition. So you would often find this repeating and later we have the summary table to see this. And consciousness and mental states are dependent uh, for mind born matter and so on. Okay, then um, the first one, this dependent condition, this is the sahajata, mutually dependent, and another one, purijata, that is born earlier. Like the um, virtu purijata neseya, base object prenation support. It means I base is related to I consciousness by supporting condition. It means um, this visible object depend on the I for arising. That is simply this meaning only. And Jekhaya Danam, Jekhu Vinyana Dhatuya, and Dham Samyo Daga Nenjav Dhamana associated Dhamma, Naysaya Pechiyi Na Pechiyo, and also the heart base. Like I consciousness depend on I base, so is the body consciousness depend on body base, and the remaining consciousness depend on heart base. So this is the meaning. And another one, Upa Naysaya. This is a uh, very, Naysaya means supporting or the uh, dependent. And Upa Naysaya means strong, powerful dependence or the decisive support. That is the meaning. So again, it is threefold. That is the object decisive support, Aramana Upanesaya. Aramana object, Upanesaya, um, that is the decisive support or strong support, powerful support. Again, actually, it is the same with the um, predominant object. When we come, when we were in the third condition, that is the Adibadi, I have given this example that I have been thinking about the sound that another people talking ill of me. That sound has been influencing me, right? It become predominant object. That sound become predominant object. That is the Aramana Adipati. Now Aramanubanesia is also the same. That is the object. Here, outstanding object that draws our attention. That object might be something esteemed to be cherished, strongly desire, or even dislike one. Like in my example. And another one, proximity. That is the um, wholesome dhamma is related to wholesome, and now the next wholesome dhamma by decisive condition. So here later I will have example, okay? Purima, purima. So that preceded, that comes before kusala dhamma, the meritorious deed that arises before pechimanam, pechimanam, so the former merit is the supporting condition for the later merit to happen. So we can have this example. How um, this is the kusala, the role of kusala, let's say. How kusala can bring about a kusala? So it is strange, right? It would be strange. For example, Purity of virtue. Some people, they observe the virtue very well. So they are virtuous person. But what happened? Mana or pride can arise. I am such a virtuous person and other people are not virtuous. You know, the observance of the pure morality is the kusala. And depending on kusala, a kusala might arise. We have to be very careful. Um, if there is pride, then this pride is a kusala. And given charity, you build a building to the uh, temple or you have offered some uh, donation, maybe robe or food or whatever. And later you see uh, something inconvenient or maybe you see that a person become unvirtuous or like um, there is some unhappy mind arises. Then, or maybe you spend more than what you have um, intended or there can be many things 
and when you are doing charity, you are doing happily. But somebody, when somebody would interrupt, then there is remorse arises, right? Go go cha arises. Oh, that person say, oh, you shouldn't donate here. You should have, you shouldn't donate to CLA. You should have donated to some other place. And there is remorse arises. Oh yes, I should have donated to another place and so on. And this is another one regarding jhana attainment. One attain jhana, and there is clinging or attachment to that. So how kusala is related to akusala by this uh, upanesya or decisive support condition. Again, the first like in the first example, purima, purima, kusala, dhamma, the former kusala, pachimana, pachimana, kusala, nandamana, to the later arising of kusala, it serves as the support. So how you can multiply, let's say, uh, marriage? Then after you observe more virtue, then your mind is very pure, then you are ready to practice meditation. So kusala followed by kusala. And um, with the confidence or sada, you offer alms food to the sangha, right? Because of kusala, sada, then you are ready to do any good or any um, wholesome action. This is kusala to kusala. And Perform, you perform marriage and share with others. So at the end of our class, this is what we will do today. We have accumulated merit for these eight weeks, then we will share with others. So uh, the merit that we gain from learning or organizing this course, and I'm imparting my knowledge. And if we share with others, we multiply, right? So this is how Kusala produces Kusala. And now come the role of our Kusala. So taking after taking alcohol, commits adultery. So akusala, because of this akusala, another akusala is followed. And telling lies, a person tell lie and deceive others. Double akusala, right? And stealing weapon and commits robbery. So because of akusala, the first akusala or unwholesome or unethical action support another unwholesome thing to commit or to perform. But what is more important? Akusala produces kusala, right? This sounds strange. After killing animal, then people make charity, right? Um, maybe a butcher or um, somebody who sell meat, uh, they, they kill some animal, but the purpose is for the making charity. So. The killing animal is akusala, but making charity is kusala. And with clinging, clinging me, um, by, the, by offering this kind of merit, may I attain, may I be reborn in the celestial abode. At me, with the clinging to the celestial abode, then we might offer arms as well, right? So akusala to kusala. So, and another one, decisive support condition, it is very broad even in our daily life. Like we live in our society, in the society, we cannot live alone. And association with a virtuous person will lead us to, some, to do something good. And if I, um, if I associate with some person who spends so much and who indulges in the uh, sensual pleasure, I would also do the same, or I would lead to some addiction if I associate with the like drug addicted person and so on. Like the season, cold weather, hot weather. And now the weather is just moderate here in Yangon, though it is winter, it is not very cold. So it's just uh, moderate enough. And food, good food, fresh food, suitable food, it gives us energy. But when we eat something spoiled food, not fresh, not suitable for my health, also it gives some changes in my physical body and dwelling place. Now we are fortunate enough to live in a clean and tidy place. So uh, we are healthy. We have good environment. It is uh, airy and we have uh, some fresh air and with some trees around. So uh, we are lucky. This is how the Senasana or the dwelling place. And if the place is untidy or the environment is also not clean or polluted, then there is effect in us. 
and another one, Puri Jada, that is born earlier. Born earlier. Like the moon and the sun already existed at the beginning of the world cycle. So as they arise earlier, they give benefit to us by giving warmth or by giving light or by giving coolness. And Aramana Puri Jada, object that is born earlier. So here, sense objects are born earlier than sense consciousness. Um, suppose here, this is the adapter. The adapter, let's say this is, you see this for the first time. You have never seen this particular adapter, I mean, because this is my adapter, only when I show you, you can see it. But I have put this adapter on the table since the beginning of this class, right? So it already existed. And only when I show you, then you pay attention, you can see. So this visible object, it arises or it existed earlier than the seeing consciousness, right? So this is the example, Aramana Bure Jada. Vatu Bure Jada, base born earlier than seeing consciousness. Your eye base is already there, right? Only when I show this adapter, then you can see. So this eye base arises earlier than the seeing consciousness, that is Pure Jata. It already existed since uh, you are young, right? But only when I show this, you have the seeing consciousness. So this eye base existed earlier, that is the Pure Jata. Um, another one here, the same example that I have already explained in number two, being born earlier than eye consciousness. This is the series of thought. It runs for 17 thought moments. In the example, the mango already fell down before the man sees that, right? So the object already existed before that seeing consciousness. So that is arises earlier and both nascent, that is arises later, arises later. Like here, the commentary give this example, vulture, Vulture that bats, uh, they often dwell or they often live on the uh, foul things or they eat foul animals or the dead body or so, right? Then uh, traditionally, the mother won't, give, won't bring food to the baby vulture, it says that. But the baby has the expectation that mother will bring food and with that expectation that it survives. So the food, um, the baby vulture or the offspring has the expectation that the mother will be, bring food to him or her to eat, then that animal, that creature survive. So this is how the nutriment that would come or that he or she will have it give um, benefit to this body. This is post nascent condition. And again, now this is the um, winter here in Myanmar. And so far we don't have rain, for example. But so the, the, the trees and the plants are a bit dry, we have to water. Then let's say they are waiting for water. So just like the rain water that fall later promotes the growth and development of the tree that are already existed. And again, I hope it is the same with this participant. Suppose you are new to this class and first you didn't understand what Abhidhamma mean to you, but with the expectation that at the next lecture, at the next lecture, second, third, fourth, the fifth lecture, the sixth lecture, the last lecture, I hope I will be able to understand with that expectation and with that belief or with that thought, suppose you join, this is also Pachajada right, both nascent condition. And repetition condition, that is the asevana uh, pachaya. It means we have to repeat it doing again and again. Like at the beginning of our class, we recite namota sa bhagavado arahado sama sambodasa. Even if I woke up from the bed, I can recite. At, at any time you can recite without any mistake. Because we have been repeating so often. Again, in the same way we do chanting. 
especially after class, I try afternoon chanting. My thought goes to the class. What I have, I have explained or what I will do next week or I, I would reflect on this um, Dhamma Chaka Bhavadana Soda or Anada Lekhana Soda that I will explain this in the next lecture, the thought go there. But um, suppose I'm digested, I, I'm just reciting itself because it has been repeatedly recited. It is going itself. So it is the meaning. So repeated learning lead to the thorough understanding of lesson and remembering as well. So here we can see, but for this repetitive condition, we think about only the dynamic or Chawana moment. So here, former Kusala Chawana is related to later Kusala Chawana by repetitive condition. Let's see first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seven. We have seven moments of Jawana. Which moment you think would be the strongest? The last one, right? Because the second one gets support from the first one, and the third one gets support from the former two, and the last one gets support from all these things. Like um, Abhidhamma, like our class. This is the last one, the eighth lecture. So at least your knowledge and understanding would be increasing. Or if you already learn, you would refresh or you would understand better, you would understand clearer. So this is the meaning. Um, so another one is the karma condition. By karma, we have two kinds. So karma is often compared to the seed that is well planted. And cognizant karma and asynchronous karma, that is the sahajata karma. Now, because of the jedana, jedana associated with all type of jeda. Now I'm explaining you with the kusala jedana and you're also trying to pay attention. There is also kusala jedana and there might be some other akusala jedana as well, like torturing other, telling lie and all these things, uh, backbiting that is with akusala jedana. That is at the same time, happening with at the same time. And asynchronous karma, nanekanika karma, our past karma and the result, they are different, right? Because of our past karma, now we are born as a human being. So the action or the karma was in the past and the result is now. So the performing of action and the result happened at different time, nana kana, that is the meaning. So the details, I have all this explanation in the chart and resultant condition that is the vipaka pejaya. That is the result produced by causes. So for the resultant here is a good example. The taxi relaxing in the cold breeze, breeze leisurely. You don't do anything, just relax. It means for the resultant, we can't do anything, right? Or what we can do is what we can manage is only in the cost. But for a resultant, we can do anything. It will just come. And we just have to uh, wait and see the result or the benefit. And the nutriment condition, that is the Nama Ahara and Ruba Ahara. Actually, we have seen this when we study about the Gabali Gara Ahara, edible food. We have another term, Oja, right? This Oja is included in the basic unit of matter. A former Haguda and the visible object, sound, smell, taste, and this nutritive essence is there. So this Ahara is twofold, Nama Ahara and Ruba Ahara. By Nama Ahara, a Ruba Ahara, it refers to the, in the edible food that we take, there is the Ruba Ahara and also form part of the material group. And Nama Ahara, we have already seen pasa. Uh, by ahara, we have to understand that produces effect. So pasa causes vedana, right? In the Badeja Samobada. So pasa is also ahara. And jedana, because of motivation, then we do activities that is the sankhara pechaya vinyana. And the fourth one, rebirth consciousness bring about nama and rupa. It may Vainyana um, Pechaya Nama Rupa. These all belong to the Padeja Samopada. And the faculty condition, that is the uh, faculty mean exercising power. It is like the minister or the regional chief. They have authority or power only in their respective field. 
like Minister for Education cannot manage anything for the health affairs. Like in the same way, I cannot, I can only see, I cannot hear, I cannot smell, I cannot think, right? So in the same way, ear also can only hear, ear cannot see, ear cannot touch, ear cannot smell. So they have their respective function. So the five sensitive matter, they also belong to the that is the prenascent faculty. And then, um, what is the next one? Uh, we have material life faculty, that is the Ruba Jivitendriya. Ruba Jivitendriya, it also contained in the Ruba Kalaba. So it has exercise or power, controlling power or authority in that group. And we also have the 15 material faculties, including the um, Jivita, Jada, Vedana, Sada, and so on. It means Sada, it has authority or power only in the uh, believing in karma and its result and so on. Another one, absorption condition, jhana condition. That is the close contemplation on an object. Maybe during meditation, you watch very closely Casina object. Casina object means, for example, um, the white casina. You make, you prepare a disc of casina and you contemplate only on that white circle. Then you can contemplate this is as white, 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 and till even when you close your eye, you can visualize that object. Right? So this is how the absorption condition, and also you can uh, contemplate on the impermanent nature of the things. And we have five jhana factors, Vitaka, initial application, Vijara, sustained application, join, Piti, feeling, and one-pointedness. These actually we have already seen in the mental states or Chetasika, especially in the, uh, some in the particular and some in the universal group. So, and then Mega, we, are, we all know about the eight factors of Mega, right? Right view, right action, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right concentration, and right wisdom, right? So the path is the uh, path condition, mean constituent of these eight factors, and the means or ways for reaching a particular destination, either blissful or woeful. For example, vayama, effort. Sama vayama mean right effort. Right effort mean we may try to make right effort not to let unwholesome thing arisen. And what will unwholesome thing or akusala arisen in us, we will try to reduce, right? And at the same time, we will try to develop wholesome thing. And what has been developed, we will try to increase. This is the function of four right efforts. And again, in the wrong effort as well, people make effort in harming others in killing, making effort in killing, making effort in like uh, telling lies. So as a result, they will go to the apaya. Mega means the path condition. So this is the meaning. And then association condition, like um, butter, oil, honey, and molasses. We call what we call jadu madu. Four, four uh, things are mixed together. And it says that it is suitable to be taking even uh, after midday. If we are sick, we can take this and we can take medicine. So, so when they are mixed, like um, another example, milk and water cannot be separated. They are very well blended. And in the same way, consciousness and mental states, they are so thoroughly mixed that they cannot be differentiated. I'm talking, this is the eye consciousness, this is contact, feeling, perception, motivation, attention. Though we are saying this, it is difficult to take out and differentiate each other because they are so well mixed or so well blended, right? This is the association. Dissociation, like here we have example. Six tastes, sweet, sour, spicy, salty, tart and bitter tastes. Though they are different, maybe a curry or dish or a cuisine may have different tastes. Maybe sweet and spicy. 
uh, with a little chin of the uh, sourness as well. Though they are different, they can, as they can be together by the means of this dissociation condition. It may cause and effect are different in nature, but they can relate to each other. We have different nature, but we all live in the same community, right? Like dissociation condition, especially it referred to mind relating to matter and matter relating to mind, right? Matter or the rupa has the nature of changing, transforming, perishing, spoiling, and nama has the nature of bending towards the object. They have the different nature, but they can so they, they can relate to each other by means of this dissociation condition. So these are some detail that I have given in the chart. And prenascence and non-disappearance, ati and avigada, they are the same. Uh, so like earth is the support for the mountains or the buildings and for us living being to depend on. And in the same way, the presence, condition, and non-disappearance. I have recently explained that, right? Uh, in the uh, object and eye consciousness. So they are the same in meaning. Presence means it does not disappear, right? So they are the same. Like the parent, they support the children while they are present. So they have, um, we have different kinds that is, presence by connaissance that is born together, right? Born together is one thing. And then prenascence, born earlier is one thing. Like the five senses, they are related to sense consciousness because five senses already existed. So the five senses that already existed are relating to eye consciousness by power of being existed or born earlier. And again, five sense object, they are relating to eye consciousness that is born later. So this presence, ati and avigada, they all are the same. And so is the nati and vigada. Nati means absence. So absence or disappearance of light contribute to the appearance of darkness. So when the light disappear, the darkness appear. If there were light, the darkness cannot come, right? It means the disappearing or the absence of light give the chance for the darkness to appear. That is the meaning. And in the same way, when the sun disappear, the moon can come, come out. It means they can they shine at a different time. Or the, the death of the king contribute to the enthronement of the prince. When the father is no more there, the son will become prince. So the absence or the disappearance of the king gives the opportunity for his son to take the throne. throne. So in the same way, consciousness and mental state pass away and disappear, provide the appearance of another set of mental states. So now we come to the end of 24 condition and the first, second, third and 23 has been covered. And before, because of I have covered all the, let's say 22, 23 condition, we come to the end. So it means the earlier incidents give the chance for the former, the next to come. If I couldn't have finished two, three, four, I couldn't come to 24 directly like that, right? So the completion or the explanation or the completion of former one reach to the final one. So we will conclude with this chart. I hope not very late yet. So this 24 condition has been explaining in the, explained in the Abhidhamata Sangaha in the name of cause and effect. We can see the first one, Nama is related to Nama in that we have six conditions, Anandara, proximity, Samanandra, contiguity, Nati, absence, Vigada, um, non-disappearance, asevana, repetition, symbiota association. So this is the chart. Nama to Nama, and Nama to Nama Rupa, that is by Hetu, like how the Aloba, Adosa, and Amoha, this is the Nama, bring changes to the physical body, along with the Jedesika, Nama, and Rupa, and so on. The third one, Nama to Rupa, fourth, Rupa to Nama, and the fifth, 
Penya di nama and rupa to nama and the last one nama rupa and nama rupa each other. So it has been summarized in this chart. So actually what I have shared with you today is the very introduction to the Patana. And my knowledge on the Patana is also very limited. But my wish is that since I have introduced you with this, you would explore further. And as you recite Patana, for those who recite Patana also, uh, I encourage that you try to make the meaning better. And if there are some chances, opportunity, then I hope that we will meet sometime later. And for the time being that uh, I'm not able to fix for the next series of lectures in English yet. And I hope you will kindly understand. I have some commitment to work at for our college and also after this class, I will have this um, Abhidhamma class uh, with the same thing in Burmese. So that will uh, go for some time, but I do hope that we can meet again. And thank you so very much for um, staying up to the end of the eight lectures. And I really appreciate that uh, you all proved to be uh, very dedicated, um, even though I have not expected this much and I, I i don't know what will be the next program for our organizers like maybe they let you talk a while or we share merits or also thank you so very much to the our organizers for organizing this course and for each and everyone for their participation and for your trust in me and to let me share my knowledge and also uh, I really appreciate all your contribution, that, that uh, contribution in the sense of spiritual support and the uh, monetary financial support as well. The organizers have very well arranged and um, they, you also have received a list, I hope. So uh, now I leave the floor to the organizers. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Thank, thank you, Sally, for very uh, accelerated uh, the last session, almost uh, level three to condense into the one single <laughs> the chapter. So actually, uh, I'd like to uh, explain about the, our, donation, our donation flow, that actually uh, what we, we have done, because some of you uh, may, uh, uh, may wonder how we manage our donation, right? So actually, uh, okay, this is actually diagram uh, that we, we come up with. So uh, as the organizer, we open up our, our bank account to accept the donation from multiple donors uh, from different country. So through the mobile payment, uh, internet uh, uh, banking, TD transfer, paper, and Western uh, Union, right? So uh, of course, uh, uh, after some of the donor, maybe uh, we directly donate to the AI account in the Myanmar side to the uh, CLA, uh, the, Tajah Diha College account. So uh, as the organizer, we, we don't actually uh, uh, take any single cent. Uh, whatever we receive, uh, be the various uh, uh, the currency, we will convert it to Myanmar Jet and we will later on, we will consolidate and we will transfer to the AR account. Right. So we are thankful for some uh, donor who actually never gave up. Uh, he tried uh, many times or many methods. Actually, uh, they try to TD transfer, bounce back, and they try any, any other way and finally found that we Western Union and all that. So we thankful for those people who put it extra effort to try multiple way of making donation happen. Uh, then also uh, thanks for filling up the donation uh, form in the Google for, because actually our bank transition, we have a very limited information to trace your donation to the right uh, to the line item. So uh, thank you for your extra mind to fill up the donation form. So it make it easier for us to actually make a clear uh, actually uh, uh, the, the account accounting. So this actually uh, a few slides, I will go through a few uh, list of the donor. Uh, so uh, I also email to you, but to, to why we are speaking some of the donor actually I'm still receiving some of the donor. So those donor may not be reflected in this list, right? So, uh, yeah, we will, we will update and Julie, we will email back to you once we go there out something, right? So, so, so now, as today, we sum up together, uh, we have a Singapore dollar, 
$6,721, US dollar $1,180. Um, uh, this is a Myanmar jet, $1,090,000. Uh, and to the Canadian dollar is a $703. So we convert it as a today uh, exchange rate, it will be approximately about Singapore dollar, $10,040, or approximately U, U, uh, US dollar about the 7466 So thanks again for all your generous donation. And now I would like to request CLA to lead the marriage sharing session, please. CLA, please. Uh, so do we, we do the marriage sharing now or you, you let people talk before this? Uh, what what can, is your plan? We will open 10 minutes, you say. Okay, okay. Or okay. shall we do the sharing first and then later on we do the casual dots? Yeah. Okay. So actually this sharing of marriage is we call Anu Modana, right? We know Modana means rejoice. Anu Modana means rejoicing again and again. Just like in the Upanesia, especially the last one, Pagadupanesia, natural decisive support. We try to accelerate or accumulate our merit. Like what kind of merit we have gained from this? Uh, prior to the um, organizing of this um, course, the organizer, they have to look, uh, put lots of effort um, to communicate with me and to wait for me patiently. Uh, but they have requested since quite some time back uh, to organize this class, but there were some delays. And when this happened also, they have to take all the responsibility. Since, uh, since uh, I am not technical know-how, Mr. Charlie, Gojolwe and Masui, they have to, um, how do we say that they have to manage through the team viewer so that the class could start it. So in the technology, I am like a child and quite ignorant. So I have to depend on them for that part and also for the organizing. And there are lots of um, time and commitment to make this happen. And I really appreciate each and everyone for being with me throughout these eight weeks. And for those who are not in the Zoom class, but who join through the live classes or who listen later, or who even encourage me. Like I have some sisters, uh, they know a bit of English, but they say that they don't understand well, but they try to listen from the beginning to the end. I mean like how people show support to me and how people trust me. Actually, there are, we have many scholars in Myanmar and we are, I, I'm very fortunate to be a Myanmar since I got the teachings from the uh, scholar monks, scholar nuns and the lay scholars. And throughout my life, I have uh, learned Abhidhamar, let's say for over 20 years, but what I know is very little, but it is because of your trust in me that I could conduct this class. If you, just, if you didn't, didn't show your trust and appreciation to me uh, through the text message and in many ways, uh, I'm sure that I won't be able to continue. So uh, we have come to the end of these eight lectures. And throughout these eight lectures, we have accumulated so much merit. You have spared your precious time and energy you have saved your time and energy to join this class and show your support in many ways. And what is more important from joining this class is that we put into practice what we have learned. And I like the teaching of the one Tipi Deka Siado in Myanmar, uh, more uh, renowned as the Yo Siado Ji. Siado Ji say that when there is no practice, the knowledge or the learning are just dead, are just die. Only with the practice, our knowledge, our learning, and what we know will come into a life and lively. So um, with keeping this in mind, I believe that you all continue to study, or at least when you have time, 
there are many teachers who are teaching Abhidharma, like uh, our teacher, Rector Seado, Dr. Nanda Mala Biwamsa. There are many teachings of Seattle's teaching on the Ma Download website. And also Seattle also has given six introductory lectures. And in Singapore, we have this venerable Jaga Bala, Loga Bala Seattle. He is given, also given a Bidamar in English. And in Myanmar, we have even a lot more scholars, very famous teachers, the monk, the monk scholars, the nun scholars, and even the lay scholars. And Dhamma Juha Siyama Ji Dokken Latin is also very famous and uh, she is a very great teacher. And I would recommend that you continue your Abhidhamma study from all these teachers. And as for me, if I have chance, uh, I would be happy to share my knowledge and understanding with you as well. So each and every bit of merit that we have gained throughout these eight weeks and also those who encourage me. Because the Bidama say that merit, either you perform yourself or either you have the same mind and either you praise or you appreciate or even you do yourself. You do yourself, you encourage or you motivate others and then you appreciate it and you do with the same mind. This multiply four times. So I do hope that we share our merit, the merit that we have accrued from organizing this class, joining this class, attending this class, and my sharing of the mar in this class, and all the support that you have shown to me, either spiritually or the um, financially. May all these merit be the support to the attainment of the enlightenment. And before we attain enlightenment, if there are life that we have to wonder, or if we go in the samsara, I sincerely wish and aspire that may we born in the uh, abode where we are endowed with the knowledge of knowing what is right and what is wrong, and may we be able to practice accordingly. So I would like to share our merit, all of our merit with our guardian deities and the guardian deities at your home and each and every corner of the world and all the guardian deities who protect this Sakya Dita Buddhist College SBC and to our parents, to our teachers and to our benefactors and to each and everyone who are waiting for our merit to rejoice in Okay, and to all the beings in the 31 planes of existences and also to the guardian deities of the Buddha Sasana, then we share our merit. So uh, maybe we can recite together, even though maybe I, I don't hear you then. Um, so now can everyone speak? I you hold on, Sally. I will unmute all. Okay. So if you would like to repeat after me, then please do. Or if you just would like to listen, please remain. But uh, please pay attention. Okay. May we share? May we share? May we share? Our May we share? Marriage. Our marriage. Our, our dedicated marriage. What? Dedicated our dedicated marriage. To our guardian deities, to our guardian deities, to our teachers, to our teachers, our parents, our parents, and the guardian deities of the Buddha Sasana, the guardian deities of the Buddha Sasana, and to those who are waiting to rejoice in our merit. And to all beings in the 31 planes of existence, may they gain, may they gain 
our share of merit our share of merit with us with us with us with us of merit equally with us May they gain our share of merit equally with us. Equally with us. Oda sasana May there be all blessings, may the deities protect you. By the power of the Buddha, by the power of the Dhamma, by the power of the Sangha, may we all be well, happy, peaceful, and put our knowledge into practice and attain enlightenment. Okay, now maybe I request you to uh, turn on your video and we will really, uh, have a, some, a short conversation with uh, Seale. And lay down. No, no, no. no. Okay, of your mom, turn off your video, Turn on the video. Turn on the video, please. Turn on the video. On your device. Turn on the video, please. So can't be my arm and then Hold on. I would like to take the group photo. Okay, we will remove the gallery view. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, I, Let me uh, make the print screen first. Thank you, Thank you. 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 Thank Think back. You can chat with Siali. Uh, meanwhile, you can really uh, ask Siali any question you like to no, ask. No, <laughs> not, not, not a question. No maybe. question, just normal chatting. <laughs> okay, three page. Thank you, Siali. I hope after this COVID era, uh, I can come and meet you in person and pay my respect. Thank you for joining this video section so that I could see you all, like most of you. Um, uh, we thank you. We thanks to the organizers and uh, the, all the participants and the innovators for inventing such a wonderful technique so that we all from the different globe of the world can meet together and share yep. with what we understand. It is wonderful. Thank you, Sally, for your wonderful teaching. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Also for remaining for this section, um, some would be, it would be, um, like almost midnight, some would be midday, some time mm. for taking meal. And thank you so much for your patience to stay all the way up to the end.
I think I have to take the another <laughs> snapshot. <laughs> Thank you so much for turning on your video so that we have uh, some kind of a uh, record for you. Yeah. So maybe I hope I'll... that. Yes. Yes. I, I hope that Dhamma okay. Download would, would arrange uh, such course in future. Okay. Sure. Okay. Sure. We will Good keep time. you informed. Uh, okay. uh, once we have a, some... I owe you that uh, because I couldn't explain in all details and I could just what I could give you is just the case uh, as um, said by Mr. Charlie he said this is a, a taste a taste course or taste course so hopefully we will have time again later so that all the yeah we hope so Okay, thanks everybody. Uh, we will meet you uh, bye -bye. If we have another session that we will keep you in. Yeah, yeah. Thank bye -bye. you so much. Thank you, Charlie. Bye. Thank you, bye bye. Thank you, Charlie. Bye bye. Thank you, Mr. Charlie. Thank you, Sayala. Thank you, Sayala. Bye bye.